Today we're starting our unit on number patterns, which you've studied every year so far, going back to grade 8 and even before then. But this year we're going to expand it and get you ready for grade 12. There are four lessons that we will cover in this unit on number patterns. The first one, we're going to revise what you did last year in terms of linear patterns. In our second lessons, we'll introduce quadratic patterns. You know that in grade 11, a big focus is on quadratic equations and quadratic functions, and also on quadratic patterns. They're all interlinked, so that's mainly our focus in number patterns this year. In our third lesson, we'll do some more advanced examples on quadratic patterns. And then we'll close out doing patterns using diagrams and pictures and those kind of fun things. So in today's lesson, we're just revising what you did last year in terms of linear patterns. And some of you may have heard linear patterns also referred to as arithmetic sequences or these are our constant difference patterns. So all of those different terms are referring to the same thing. Let's start off with an example that's very similar to what you would have done in previous years. We're given a number pattern. They don't tell us that it's linear or any other type, so we have to do the, the legwork of figuring out what type of pattern it is. Let's start off by reading the first question. So the first question says, determine the nth term. Hopefully you remember from previous years that other ways of saying the nth term are the general rule or the general term or the formula. So basically they want us to figure out the equation that represents this number pattern. To do that, what I like to do is write out my terms in terms of the term number as well, so the position number because you'll remember from previous years that you're going to relate whatever this position number is related to the term itself. And we relate them with our formula, with our general rule. We'll see how to do that in a second. So I like to draw them out in a table kind of format like this so that I can see those two numbers side by side. The next thing we need to do is figure out what type of pattern it is. So we start by taking the difference between consecutive terms and we always take the term on the right minus the term on the left. So what I mean here is for my first two terms I have term 2 minus term 1 which is 7 minus 5 which gives me 2. Okay so very important it seems simple but it's very important that you're subtracting the one on the right minus the one on the left. And doing that for the other terms as well, 9 minus 7 gives you 2, and 11 minus 9 gives you 2. So we can see we have a constant difference going up by 2s. So now we need to start to generate our general rule. So we know that that starts with Tn, T sub n. And what I need to do is I need to take my constant difference, so 2 in this case, and multiply it by my position number of n. But if we did that here, if we multiplied 2 times 1, position number 1, I would get 2 here, but I want it to be 5. So there's something that we need to do. Let's carry on and see what we would get for the other terms. 2 times position number of 2 would give me a 4 here, 2 times 3 would give me 6, and 2 times 4 would give me 8. So in all of these cases, I'm not where I want to be in terms of the actual pattern. But to get from 2 to 5, I can add 3. 4 to 7, I add 3. And 6 to 9, add 3. And you can work it out for 8. So what that means is that for the general rule to be true for this actual pattern, I need to add 3. And that's what we see for our actual general rule. Once we have that, we can work out anything that they ask us about the pattern. So in this case, I've asked for the hundredth term. 
Now we know that we're going to substitute in for our n here. So the hundredth term, we're going to substitute 2 times 100 plus 3 gives me 203. Nice and easy there. When they ask which term is equal to a certain number, in this case I've asked 313, now I'm working backwards. So substitute in for the term in this case. And then if I subtract 3 from both sides and divide by 2, I get that the position is the 155th term is equal to 313. Okay, the way that we found the general rule in the last example is probably very similar to what you did in grade 9 and 10 and 10 especially. But in your textbook, they actually introduce another alternative method. So if you've always struggled with number patterns, then perhaps this is a, a method that you'd like to try. The book gives a general formula for the general rule of a number pattern, of a linear pattern, as Tn equals Bn plus C. And maybe in previous years, your teacher gave you dn plus c, or there are other formulae as well. But we're going to go with this one since it's what the book has. Whatever the coefficient of n is, so in this case they've called it e, is our constant difference. So if you figure out the difference between your terms, you put that in front of n. And then to work out what c is, the first term is equal to the b value, which is the constant difference, plus the c value. So if you know your first term and you have your constant difference, you can work backwards to find c. So let's see that in action. In this example, we have number pattern 1 minus 3 minus 7, so we are decreasing now. And I'm going to write it out because we're not going to be told it's a linear pattern. So let's just take the differences and make sure that it has a constant difference, which it does. Okay. So in this case, it's a negative constant difference. So I can see that this is, in fact, a linear pattern. And I'm going to use Tn equals Bn plus C. Now we said that the constant difference, a negative 4, is equal to B. So already I know one of my values. And we also said that term 1 is equal to B plus C. So if I use substitution, I can work out my missing values. B is minus 4, like we said. And then I'm going to substitute in this value of b into the equation. And now I have a very simple equation I can solve for c. And then again, substitute in to this equation to get my final rule. Now let's try a more challenging one. Pause the video here and see if you can get started on this problem. Then check back in to see if you are on the right track. All right, so by now you've tried it. So we've, we're told that the sequence, and they give us a whole bunch of expressions, is a linear pattern. And that is really important that they told us that because it tells us that there's a constant difference between the terms. So what I can do is I'm going to write out my number pattern just like before, my term 1, 2, and 3, and with those three expressions. And then I take the difference between the two terms. Now we said the difference is term two, remember the one on the right, minus the one on the left, always. So that difference, 2x minus all of 3x plus one, so it goes into brackets. And similarly, t3 minus t2, 3x minus seven minus 2x. And that could be in brackets, but because it's just one term, we can leave it the way it is. Because it's a linear pattern, we know that there's a constant difference. So that means that the difference between term 1 and term 2 has to be equal to the other difference that we found. And here I've got my one equation with one unknown x, and I can solve for x. So simplifying, what I've done in this step is I've distributed the minus into the brackets. So simplified on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, 3x minus 2x gave me x. Okay, 
Simplifying again, 2x minus 3x is minus x. And then I can take my x's to the one side, and I'm left with x equals 3. Now they ask us for the general term. Once we know x, we can substitute it back in to get the general term. Okay, so substituting in, we get each term. And now I have just a normal linear number pattern. So I feel quite confident at this point that using either the first method we did in example one or the second method in example two, we should end up with this linear number pattern minus 4n plus 14. Your homework for today is the revision worksheet on linear patterns. Good luck with that. I'll leave the next slide up for a few seconds so you can take notes if you're interested in that alternate method that I showed you. As I said in example two, these notes are just an optional uh, exploration of how we derive those um, formulae that we use to get B and to get C. So I'm not going to go into this. There's a nice explanation in your textbook under the linear patterns section. But I strongly suggest that, especially if you're somebody who's aiming for an A or a B this year, this is something that I think you should be very well able to understand and follow along with. Pause the video here, take notes on it, and make sure it makes sense to you.